tonight, and um, we're going to have a lot to deal with now and repercussions and how we're going to make sure that everybody gets to see it. Um, so I guess that's our job. But something tells me with the amount of money we made on a one-night sale, we're going to get some offers. And some distributor will pick this up. And it will be seen by the whole world without any problems. And I, I do believe that uh, because truth has an ugly way of showing itself. You know, the funny thing is, right now there's stories on the internet saying how I scammed audiences because we didn't really stream the movie. You know? And this is, this is what they want. This is what they want. They want to make it look like it was all a big scam. But you guys are witnesses. We didn't hide from it. We showed the truth. And I, I hope to God, I hope to God that somebody, uh, somebody leaks out, you know, what's the right thing and not the wrong thing. Uh, and justice is served and I hope it gives other victims the strength to come forward. There's got to be a tidal wave right now. We need a tidal wave of justice. We need a tidal wave of truth. We need a tidal wave of courage. <clears throat> We're supposed to have a panel here tonight. Um, yeah, uh, but I don't know that that's appropriate at this point. I don't feel that it is. Um, I love you all. I thank you all for coming. I just am a bit lost as to what we do next. Um, and I guess I have to figure that out because there's a lot of people, thousands of people all over the world who are sitting frustrated right now because their movie was hacked and they didn't get to see this film. Um, besides that, we had a moderator who was supposed to be our moderator tonight and she backed out at the last minute. And the reason why she backed out is because the network that she worked for, I'm not going to mention any names, wanted an embargo, which we gave her, that you know they weren't gonna release anything, and then we gave them a copy of the film, and then literally two hours before the event, she said that the lawyers wanted a copy of all of our corroborations, but also wanted to be able to go out to all the people we were accusing and ask them if they you know, wanted to defend themselves two hours before we were about to go live. And I'm like, no, 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 we can't do that. And then let me tell you another story about how we sent this out to AP. And AP had made a deal that we were gonna do a live interview today. And when we went to do that live interview today, the same thing they asked for a, a preview. They said that, you know, no problem, we won't tell anybody about it and they asked for a watermark version. We sent them the watermark version, and they said, there's no there there after watching the film. What? That's what they said. They said, there's no story here. This has all been previously reported. There's no news. There's no news here. So this is a really, really, really crazy, strong showing of the dark side trying to keep this silent. And we, all of us here tonight, are saying, that's not okay. That's not okay. The truth must survive. Children must be saved. We must accept this fact. So, if anybody wants to say anything, you're more than welcome. If anybody's got a question, I'm happy to answer it. And uh, and I want to say, Ricky, is Ricky here? Where's Ricky at? Ricky, come here. Come here. I just want to give this man... I love you.
So his lucky number was 222. That happened to be Corey Haim's lucky number. And it's just crazy because he just told me that he was sitting in seat 22. <laughs> Tickets went on sale on 222 over 22. So anybody, I saw somebody raise their hand. They said they had a question. Yes, what's your question, sir? Uh, March uh, 10th, tomorrow. Yeah. Are you having a screening at uh, noon? Well, that's a damn good question. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have the answer. I mean, the plan is we're going to continue as planned. But uh, whether they can get their technology back up online and working before noon is anybody's guess. So. Talk about a bit of suspense, eh? <laughs> so I guess we're gonna have to, you know, look at it. If it doesn't happen, then we're gonna find another day to stream it, you know? And another day, and another day, and we're gonna just keep doing it until we get the truth out. We're not gonna give up. People take money to see the truth, they're gonna get the truth, right? That's it. And we love you guys. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you all for showing up. I love you so much. Yeah. Corey, I want to I want to commend you on your bravery. Um, and I think, yeah. I, I think uh, one question I have, probably a lot of us have, um, is what do you think your dear friend Corey Haim would think if you were in the audience tonight, watching this film, and knowing all the work that you've done, and having the world see what you told us tonight? He's absolutely here. He's absolutely here. Thank you. He's, he's helped guide this thing in, in such a way. This is what's happened is is historical, guys. This is historical. Do you guys understand? I think we made like a million dollars in ticket sales tonight. I'm not joking. Okay. People all over the world right now are disappointed because they were all waiting to see this movie. But it's not about that. It's about the fact that they cared enough. Yeah. That's what it's about. So thank God for that. Yes, Brandon, how can I help you? Well, I would like to say it gave me a completion in my heart, but until I know that the world is seeing my truth, it's not complete. Yeah. I could cut the hair, I could show you guys, but there's a billion people out there that need to see this movie right now. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, how long has the wolf pack been harassing you for this thing? It's the wolf pack started um, basically right when the tour ended because Certain members of the Wolfpack were actually spies that were planted into the tour. Oh my God. And that's kind of how the tour fell apart. It's a very long story. That's a whole other movie <laughs> if we wanted to do it. And we started going down that road and we were like, we can't, we can't go down this road. It's too much. Because the whole point has got to stay focused on, we got to focus on getting these diffusers. It's not about the Wolfpack. That's too much attention for them. Don't give them the time of day. They don't deserve it. It's about going after the abusers, it's going after these guys, and, and, it's, and it's showing people that by having the courage to come forward, that your story can be told too, and that you can get justice. That's really what it's about, that's what matters. Hi. <laughs> uh, yes. God forbid. God forbid, but you know what? The world is a sick place. People will do anything for power and money. It's very sick. But we're here to change it. <laughs> kids too! Please hashtag kids too when you leave here tonight. Hashtag kids too. And uh, all the way in the back, there's somebody who's got her hands up for a long time. Yes? I did ask, and yes, she did decline. But that was because she said she needed to make an appointment. She didn't straight decline. She said she needed to make an appointment, but we didn't have time for an appointment. We did, but again, we. she said it would be a couple months down the road, and we, were, we didn't have that kind of production budget or schedule.
to shove it under the rug. Did you know that? I did not know that. Well, you should look. You should. You should look. Up Which co-executive producer? No, no, no. The co-committee chair of the Young Performers Committee, without it as a pedophile, in open secret. Michael Camara. Okay. Good to know. Do you guys know about this? Amy Berg's film. Yeah, I know about Amy Berg's film. I just haven't seen it. I, I know I'm in it, but you guys know about this, right? Right now, I have the whole SAG sexual harassment committee here. Like all my all my family, my loved people, they're all here with me. God bless you guys for being here. So we're working on it. Trust me. Now that now that we're working together, there is going to be change. I promise you that. I, yeah. We're working on four committees right now. Four committees to change the laws, to change the uh, the Child Actors Handbook, the laws regarding children on the set, children in the workplace, children in the environment. It's all coming with a movement that we're calling a sub subcommittee called Kids Too. Thank you, of course, Pamela right here for helping make that happen. God bless you. And a big, a big prayer for Frances Fisher, who couldn't be here with us tonight. God bless her. She's a big part of why I'm on that committee, too. Thank you, Frances. God bless you. Our hearts are with you. Okay, yes, yes, yes. I very much believe Bobby Hoffman was part of it. Yeah, oh, based on what I saw. Remember, we didn't go into all the details in the film. There's certain things you can't put across because if you don't have corroborators, because somebody's not alive, etc., etc., etc. Oh, he was great with kids. <laughs> I mean, as a kid. You thought so, you know. Like I loved going to Bobby's office because it was like a big playground in there, and he was so sweet, so wonderful, and so warm. Marzi, would you like to say anything? Do you want to come up and say hi? Come say hi. You came all the way from New York. Come, here, come say hello. So this is one of the bravest people you'll ever meet. Yeah. yeah. survivors all over the country. I have dealt with survivors trying to fight the Catholic Church, trying to fight Penn State, the U.S. Olympic Committee. There's really not much more buttoned up than Hollywood. It really is remarkable. So if this was hacked tonight, it just means you have to show it again and again and again. I hope you will all join the fight to protect children. I really do. They can't protect themselves even when they look old enough, when they look so grown up. Kids need protection. And we can do it, but only if we do it together. So, thank you, Corey. Thank you guys for coming out. Thank you, Marcy, so much for coming all the way from New York. I love you. God bless you. Uh, Brian, just before we go, I just want to acknowledge Brian. Where is he? Brian. Brian. Come say what hi. Up? Real quick. Come on. Real quick. Just come say hi, because I know everybody loved your film. And they want to just thank you real quick. And then we're going to let you all go. Yes? Okay. Go ahead. As a survivor of abuse, I know that, that people who abuse people have been abused themselves. And I, I just wonder if there is, um, I don't know if our court system has evolved to a point where there is psych psychological help for the people who have been abused and then go on to become <coughs> abusers. I wonder if that is a part of the conversation. Marcy can answer that because question. When we say the words fight against abuser or fight to keep children safe, the fight can perpetuate more fight and more fight. And right. I think that what we want to introduce also is that there is a larger conversation about how fight perpetuates fight. So how do we find compassion in our hearts? 
Compassion is the key word. Absolutely. Absolutely. Go ahead, Marcy. So, so it, it turns out that the vast majority of people who are sexually abused as kids don't go on to abuse, but some do. But what we know right now is that if you have a child who is sexually abusing a child and you get them the treatment they need, you can stop it. And what we're not doing is we're just throwing kids in juvenile hall. We're not helping them. We need to help the kids who are the offenders as well. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you. Yes. Go ahead. I just want to say thank you. Um, I, as well, was abused as a child uh, for many years by multiple, Sorry. multiple people. And uh, one of my abusers, I got to admit to everything they did. And it, it turns out they were abused themselves as well. Um, this is something that is a real issue. I, we need to help them as well because... There, there has to be forgiveness eventually. I know that's not... I mean, and you know what? Not everybody agrees with you guys. I'm a, a, a victim too that survived. And can, can you guys not make this about a conversation that maybe not everybody's going to agree with you and you're taking away from his time on stage and his, and his moment? So maybe you guys have a discussion. And you know what? I love you both. I love you all. Thank you guys for being here. This is what it's about. Thank you for coming out, guys. We appreciate it. It's all talking about it. God bless you guys. Go ahead, Brian. Brian, ladies and gentlemen, he's the one that crafted this film. Clean him. Uh, no, I just wanted to say thank you sincerely for coming out tonight. Uh, the technical difficulties were interesting, but at least, um, you know, I, I'm pretty sure you read the big sigh of relief when you got to see that done. Like, get to see the movie out and have everybody see it. I did, and I, you know. It's like a real movie where you see the premiere before the rest of the yeah, world, right? But, um, wah, wah. but again, it, it meant a lot that you guys were there to witness it, and um, it was, it was uh, a very moving experience on, on our end. Uh, hopefully it was for you, too. And hopefully, look, the, the Kids too conversation really needs to just uh, keep going. It, it has to. I mean, I remember asking Marcy when we were talking, like, what can we do here? And she says, you're doing it. And that's, that's the thing, just get the awareness out, okay? That's all. So thank you. I'm good. We gotta go. Yeah. You guys get home, or if you want, we're having a party at the rainbow. I'm sure there's still time to celebrate. Free pizza and free potato skins for anybody who comes by. Thanks. Also, just want to thank everybody who risked their lives and put their name and their name on the line.